All right, I'm here with actor Corey Jacoma, who is starring off-Broadway in uh, Dodger Stages as Bob Gaudio in Jersey Boys. Uh, it's a road you, uh, role you played on the road, but yeah. before we get to that, why don't we talk a little bit about when you decided you want to be an actor and you know yeah. what steps you took. Yeah, so I, I started theater very young, you know, as, as everyone in the theater world does. I, I was doing community theater shows. I played Baloo the Bear. It was my, my starring role as, <laughs> as a young one. Um, and, uh, and from there, I you know, got into theater a little bit more as I got a little bit older. Started doing community theater productions and, and doing high school productions. But really where it started, started sinking in was my junior year of high school. All of my senior friends were graduating and going to theater schools and Carnegie Mellon's and Lawns and Michigan's and Pace's and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, wait, you can go to school for this? And then friends started booking jobs and started getting paid for it. And I was like, wait, you can get paid for it? And, like, it, it, and it just, it all started piling on, it, on itself. And I was like, wait, this is what I want to do. Um, I had I had very few other passions as strong as theater, and so I knew that's what I wanted. And so then I, I got into Pace University in Manhattan, and it was always a dream of mine to move back to New York because I was raised on Long Island and moved to Florida when I was young, but I always wanted to come back, and Pace gave me that opportunity to, and I took it, and, and then right after college I was fortunate, fortunate enough fortunate enough <laughs> to uh, to hop on the road with Jersey Boys and it's been a dream since. What was it like touring for you coming out of school and, and jumping right on tour? What was that like? It was terrifying at first mm -hmm. because it was my first big thing. I had done a few regional productions but it was by far the biggest part of my career and to do a show as, as known as Jersey Boys and to have, have such a following it was terrifying, <laughs> you know, coming right out of school. Mm -hmm. But there's really nothing that, that could have prepared me more than what I had already learned at Pace University. And so I just had to trust my training, you know, what do they say? They say, when it comes down to it, what you have is your training, and that's really all that you got. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to trust that and went into the process, and it, the, the cast and crew welcomed me with open arms, which was a dream come true. Um, and I knew the show so well because I'd seen right. it seven times before I joined the company. So, so I sort of knew it like the back of my hand. Um, but yeah, you know, doing shows longer than a 15 show run at a, at a college production, that was the biggest thing for me was the stamina of being like, all right, God, no days off sort of deal. Right. You know, and you have one day off a week, but besides that, you're just going to keep on trucking along. But, you know, your body is capable of a lot more than you think it is, yep. and I learned that. <laughs> and now, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the interview, you're here at Dodger Stages yeah. now, playing the same role you played on yeah. tour. Um, what do you like best about portraying Bob Guardio? I know that you did meet him in person. Yeah. Uh, so what was that like, and what do you find most challenging and most gratifying about playing Bob? Well, meeting him was an absolute dream. I mean, I when I joined the, the show, my dream was to meet Bob Guardio. That was... I, no matter what happened, I was like, I just want to meet the guy. You know, I want him to see me portray him. And so getting to meet him was the coolest thing. I, he came during tech. He was here for two weeks while we were teching the show. Just hearing the sound, making sure the levels were all good, because he's the ears for sure. And I remember I was wearing a sweatpants and like a baggy t-shirt and a baseball cap. And I was like, oh, man, if I had known I was meeting Bob Gaudio, I would have dressed up. Right. Um, and so I met him, and he was the nicest guy, and so cool and collected, and just, just you know, the the salt of the earth kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And so that was a dream come true. And getting to portray him every night is once again a, a dream come true. I keep on using that phrase, but. It, I still can't wrap my head around right. that I, I had this opportunity because it was always a dream of mine and it still is a dream and I am still constantly reminding myself that it is a dream. Um, and, and you know, his story is so cool and, and the way he progresses the plot, every scene that Bob has is so crucial to the script and so crucial to their story. You know, you have you have Tommy DeVito who's like, you know, steals the attention and grabs everybody. And he's like, I'm the guy. And Nick, you know, Nick Massey is the he's the comedic relief. He comes in Act Two and then speaks up and just tears the house down. And Frankie, obviously, even though I'm a little too tall for him, but uh, you know, Frankie, Frankie it has all of those songs that are just, you know, they're they speak for themselves. Right. Um, but Bob is Bob. There was something that always drew me to his story. 
you know, everything that he does was pivotal to their success. You know, he wrote all the songs. He was the brains. He he was the business of the group. You know, he he dug them out of that debt that they were in mm -hmm. and sort of saved the group. And he's responsible for a lot of their success. And to be able to to tell people that because a lot of people see you know see the Four Seasons and see them in concerts or saw them in concerts. And they don't realize that that Gaudio was was a lot of the reason they were so successful. But because he wasn't a fan of the spotlight, he never really got a ton of the praise that he deserved. And so to to give him a little bit of that praise is an honor. Yeah. Now, live theater things happen. Oh yeah. What is uh, what has been either the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you, oh, or something man. that's broken your concentration on stage because it happened to one of the other actors or somebody in the audience or. <laughs> I, you know, for the sake of, of embarrassing someone, I won't tell the story, but there's <laughs> plenty of stories. Um, but, you know, I, there was one show where at the end of, um, at the end of Who Loves You, which is the finale of the show before Vows and everything, you know, we, there's this step where we, we cross and we do this turn and grab our mics and like dip it down, point at an audience member, and you feel like such a, a rock star. Mm -hmm. And I, I do the turn and I'm, I feel like I'm killing it. And I turn around and I just backhanded my mic and my <laughs> microphone goes flying into the audience oh, and the God. mic stand falls over. Yeah. So while everyone else is like doing the dances, me, 6'3", is like crawling on his hands and knees in a suit trying to pick up my <laughs> mic stand. Very nonchalantly, um, I'm nonchalant. sure. Oh yeah, casual, <laughs> I really made it work. Yeah, no one, no one noticed <laughs> that that was out of place or anything at all. Exactly. Did and you recover? I, I recovered it and the best part was during vows, they had passed up the mic through the crowd. And so then during vows, you know, we, we finish the vows and at the end, the four seasons give a little wave. Mm -hmm. And I give a wave and out of the corner of my eye, I see this this woman holding my microphone. So I run to the edge of the stage, I grab my <laughs> mic and just fist bump it to the ceiling. It was now, funny though. Now, if you were a real actor, you would have crowd surfed. I guess Got so, the mic, no. <laughs> Dan, and crowd surfed back with it. You're right. So if that ever right. happens again, you, I need uh, to go back you to have the like idea. This. Yeah, you have. <laughs> I'll take full credit for that. If there that we happens. go. Done. <laughs> Maybe tonight. Maybe done. I'll kick it over. For you. <laughs> now, you've done theater primarily. Yeah. Uh, are you interested in going out for TV roles and film roles, or do, do you, is this your niche? I would. I, theater? You know, theater is my passion, mm -hmm. but I. You know, I've always been the type of actor that I, I just want to be in this field, whatever that may be. Um, I love this industry so much, you know, the, the ups and the downs of it all. I just want to be a part of it and be a part of the living, breathing beast mm -hmm. that is theater. And, you know, film is theater in a way. And, right. and I would love to get on TV and film and do some work there because that's a lot of fun too. Um, and I've done I've done a few little things with TV and film, but but nothing nothing that's uh, that's keeping me going with it. And right. so I would love to you know have a run sort of like I've had with Jersey Boys, being lucky enough to do that. That would be uh, very cool. Is there a certain genre you would like to uh, to dive into? You know, horror or or comedy or drama or? You know I think that uh, a lot of people don't expect it from me, but I'm the biggest freaking goof. Yeah. And I would love to do some slapstick just. You know, silly comedy sort of stuff. I would love to do that. Show a little bit of my my lighter side. Um, but at the same time, there's also you know so much work that I would love to do in the in the serious stuff and show my acting chops because ultimately I spent a lot of money on uh, some education <laughs> to, to to do that. And and so I would love to be a part of it. And anyway. Now you also uh, write and perform music, correct? Yeah, sure do. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? What uh, what drives you to do that, and what you know, yeah. what kind of music do you write? I, you know, I write a little bit of everything. I, I write, you know, your typical singer songwriter sort of stuff. I play guitar and a little bit of piano. Um, but you know, when it comes to writing, it, one of my favorite singer songwriters' name is Benjamin Scheuer. Okay. He he said something that I found very profound. He said, you know, good writers write about what they don't want other people to know, or what, what they don't want to admit to other people. Mm -hmm. Great songwriters write about what they don't want to admit to themselves. And I think that songwriting is such an incredible opportunity to, to it's therapy, you know, to get out these, these emotions that you're having and things that are backing you up a little bit, um, and you know, anxiety, whatever that be, may be. Um, mm -hmm. Just getting to sort of flesh that out, and you know, you have your guitar, and you get to beat up your guitar a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, but then there's also you, know, you can write love songs. It's 
you know, it's a blank canvas for you to just throw the paint at and see what sticks. And I love it. That's awesome. And I'm hoping to write, you know, an EP and release it at some point, you know, hopefully next year. Release we'll it too. while you're still in Jersey, boy, so you can <laughs> sell it here at the merch stand. There we go. Come on, right? gotta, gotta work every opportunity, Corey. That's it. <laughs> Now, uh, what do you do in your downtime besides writing music and performing? You know, what do you what do you do when you're just exhausted and from doing eight shows a week? It's sleep. Yeah. I sleep a lot. Yeah. Uh, especially right now, I've, I've been fighting something. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I've been sleeping a lot. Um, I also love just spending time with friends and family and my girlfriend, just sort of sitting down and detoxing and. Mm -hmm not thinking about theater for a second you know even though i am such a theater nerd yeah I think more than i care to admit i also love seeing shows um but you know there there's a time where you want to just sit down and veg out and not think about what you're going to be doing eight shows a week um and so so spending a lot of me time spending a lot of time with people that i love is a huge part of, of Corey. Now you mentioned you like to see theater. Um, it's like trying to pick your favorite child, but oh, what has yeah. been your favorite thing to see? A Jersey Boys is always up there, believe it or not, and I'm not just saying that. Mm -hmm. I wish that I, I was just saying that, but you know, it, it has always been the show for me. Yeah. Um, but also my, my favorite show, all-time favorite show, I saw a show called The Lion um, by Benjamin Shore, that singer-songwriter that I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. And he... It was a one-man show, just him, a couple guitars, and a couple chairs, and he was telling his story, this this story that was so deep in himself, um, that was hard for him to admit to himself, and it was it was joyful and humorous and heartbreaking, and it was every emotion on the spectrum, and it was so incredible to see a human just sitting there mm -hmm. with his guitars, not, nothing, it wasn't flashy or anything, and he, just the most honest storytelling you'll ever see. Um, and so I got to see that twice, cried like a friggin' baby, and, uh, <laughs> and it, it still sticks with me today. I also love Bandstand that was on Broadway last season. Um, the, you know, Corey Cott blew me out of the water, Laura Osnes, and just the entire company. And another another story that was so honest in its storytelling, and Andy Blankenbuehler's direction and choreography, it was just, just breathtaking. And I really, really enjoyed that one. Very cool. Well, I'm looking forward to you knocking me off my Let's feet tonight. So. It'll be uh, <laughs> exciting to see you perform, and I want to thank you so much for taking time to thank do this you. before your show. Um, I'm glad I could. Yeah, me too. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks a lot. Man. All right, take care. Take care.